Yes. Got it. So I figured we'll just start with an introduction of yourself. Um, let us know who you are and what you do. Sure. Um, again, my name is Chet Hosmer. I'm an assistant professor of practice, now retired, but working with the university on research projects. Um, and uh, I've been doing research in um, cybersecurity for almost 30 years now, wow. um, specifically um, analyzing one of the areas of expertise in is in analyzing photographs and videos for their integrity. Um, developed multiple products, um, written many books in that area. I do lots of presentations every year, typically about a dozen around the world. Um, where I'm talking about this topic and other things um, that are related to cybersecurity and forensics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I live in just outside of North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, that is where my um, current residence is. I grew up in upstate New York and went to Syracuse University. And so kind of quick little background of what I'm doing, but I've been teaching at the college for a number of years, again, teaching some of the advanced classes in the cybersecurity program. And I've also taught at the graduate level at a couple other universities as well. Awesome. Well, let's get right into it and talk about um, the upcoming lecture and class that you guys have. It's the threats of AI generated fake digital photographs and videos in social media. Um, can you give us an overview of that topic and what you guys will be discussing in the lecture? Sure. Um, this is a really fun topic for me because I've been working on this for a very long time and the technology has changed. It started out by using something called steganography, which is hiding information within images or videos and that kind of thing. Um, and, and so it evolved into people using some of those techniques in order to be able to create, let's say, fake photos, just to keep it simple. So mm -hmm. initially people were using things like Photoshop in order to be able to create photographs that... Um, um, have been altered and modified. But today, um, artificial intelligence is used in order to be able to make those manipulations of those images. Whether they come from a photograph or whether they come from a camera or whether they come from CGI, it doesn't matter. They're making alterations to those in order to influence people to do certain things, to make specific political statements, to make specific social statements. But as you enter into social media, the concept of sharing these altered photographs and videos on um, social media start to um, generate interest. And in fact, they, they tend to cause people to believe them more because they're a video or a photograph. People tend to gravitate or, okay, it's a photograph of whoever it is and that looks like them. It's Elon Musk or Taylor Swift or whatever it happens to be. And that's them in that particular situation. It's Beyonce basically promoting this particular product or technology when she has nothing to do with that particular area. So there's all of these issues of people utilizing these techniques to build content that looks so real. Mm -hmm. The second way that they use this is to basically influence people's um, political views or social views, for example. Um, they do something called amplification. So if um, somebody knows that you are interested in a particular topic or a particular social issue, they will send you videos, images, text that basically reinforces your um, statements there to make you even believe that particular position more, right? Um, and if anything comes up that might be counter to what you believe, they'll send you videos and images and text that basically counter those arguments. Mm -hmm. So those are the things called amplification or the other concept is computational um, propaganda, which all of this is propaganda based, but now it's become computational. So they can influence you through any of the social media platforms from that perspective. And the altered images and videos only enhance that, um, a believability, if you will, of that. So there's all kinds of ethical issues. You as a journalist, I mean, one of the ethical issues, if you see something on Twitter or Facebook or whatever that looks real, the question is, how, how do you know? How, how do you ensure that that photograph or video is there? Obviously, you have vetting techniques in order to be able to validate those kinds of things, but it becomes an issue. Mm -hmm. If you are an artist that you've created something like a photograph or a video, and somebody has stolen it and used it for another purpose, there's another ethical issue. You're basically um, using someone else's work in order to be able to promote 
you know, something that you're interested in. So there's all ethical issues. Mm -hmm. But the bigger problem is that these um, videos and images that are altered can get you to basically click on a link, give up your credentials. So there's a cybersecurity issue and a forensic issue that's associated with those as well because they have become so believable. So the talk is about how that evolution has taken place and what are some of the ethical issues? How do you watch out for these kinds of fakes? How do they influence you? What kind of questions should you be asking um, to verify something before you take it as ground truth? Um, mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that I'll be talking about during the presentation. And then hopefully the way I typically do presentations is I really try to engage the audience to find out what they've seen. Have they ever been fooled? What, what kinds of things have you seen on the internet or in social media that you've questioned? And mm -hmm. then get this discussion going because I don't know who the audience is going to be. Right. I don't know if um, you know. So I try to understand where they're coming from as well from that presentation. So um, I'm looking forward to um, talking about this against an area that I've been very passionate about for almost thirty years now. Yes, definitely. Um, sounds like it's going to be very insightful and interesting. Um, do you know? Are you going to talk about the ways to spot like a generated AI image and like videos and ways to tell if it is fake. Yep. I'm going to show um, a couple of demonstrations of how we, the technology that we've developed that mm -hmm. can actually analyze, let's say an image and basically show not only if the image was, let's say altered, but actually where in the image was it altered. Mm -hmm. So we can actually highlight wow. certain areas of the image have been um, modified from that perspective to kind of show people how this looks real, but let me show you where the area of this image that has been altered and modified. So yeah, I'll be talking about some of the techniques that we use to basically do that. I'll give you an example. When photographs are taken from a camera, mm -hmm. right? The way that happens is just from a lay person's perspective, you have analog data coming in through the lens, right? Of the camera. And then the camera has software that turns that into the digital image, right? Whatever it happens to be. Well, we understand and have studied that process for a very long time. So we understand how that transformation takes place between an analog signal coming into the camera and producing a digital photograph. Well, if you go in and alter the photograph, right? Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't have the same characteristics that it did if it would have come from the software that actually changes it from analog to digital. Mm -hmm. And we can detect those characteristics that are unusual um, about a particular image. For an example, when a camera takes a photograph, it basically normalizes the hue of that particular photograph. So you don't have shadows around people's faces and that kind of stuff. But if you go into that photograph and you make changes, it alters the hue characteristic of the photograph that would be un unusual in a photograph that came from a camera. Now, when you look at um, images that were CGI generated, generated by computer graphic um, um, systems, it becomes more difficult. So the combination of real photos with CGI makes it even more difficult. And that's where the AI is basically really moving to try to create these images. And you can um, do this yourself. I'll demonstrate this during that where I can take an image and say, okay, I can communicate with an AI engine and say, okay, I want you to add this information to it, or I want you to basically change the context. I want to add a hat to this person, or I want to do whatever, and it'll produce that. And if you don't like what you get, you can ask it to do it again. Mm -hmm. And so I'll show how easy it is in order to be able to alter, let's say, a photograph um, that you want to basically make into something else. I'll start out with some really funny things where um, my wife is originally from Buffalo and so we're big Buffalo Bills fans and we have two Labrador retrievers, right? A puppy and an older dog. So we've actually created a, um, I've actually created a uh, image of those two dogs in Buffalo Bills gear at a game and it looks like they're really there, All right? So there's some fun things we can do, right? With mm -hmm. that. Um, but, but then obviously there's some dangerous things that we can do as well. I don't right. know if that answers your kind of general um, question about how we do this and how yeah. we can potentially detect. Yeah, it does. Um, and it sounds really, I'm sure that'll be interesting to see when you guys do it in the lecture. Um, yeah. And then just one more question. How do you see this benefiting the community for them to be informed on information like this? 
I think the big thing is awareness. We want to make sure everybody is aware that this is happening mm -hmm. because it can affect them personally if they fall for one of these fakes, mm -hmm. um, how it can influence, you know, their political position, their social position um, with fake information, how to differentiate those and how to validate those before you make decisions and how to think clearly when you're looking at this information so that um, you, you know that, hey, this could be fake and how do I verify that? You know, um, how do I know that what I'm looking at is real? Um, so I think it's really important for people to question everything. Mm -hmm. And because it's so people are so it's so easy to take a look at a photograph and say, oh, wow, that's real. I know that, you know, that came from Chase Manhattan Bacon. I know that's their logo and that's what it looks like. But it's completely fake. Right. So you click on the link and you give up your credentials and it could impact them personally um, from that perspective. So we want to make sure the big takeaway here is awareness of how sophisticated these fakes are and how they can influence the way people think, act, react to things um, that um, may not be exactly true. Gotcha. Yeah. And just some more information just about when this class is. Um, it will be, what are the dates, the time? Do you know the, that? Yeah, I think it's the, um, I believe it's the 29th. Yeah, I think it's the 29th of February, which is funny because it's leap year, right? So yeah. it's the 29th of February, and I think it's like six o'clock or 5.30, but definitely, um, I don't know the exact time, but I think it's, you should probably get that from the college. All right. For we'll, sure, just we'll to check, double check, check on, on that. that. Yeah, we'll double check it and I'll link it in our caption and have the registration link in there as okay. well. Thanks for your time. Thanks for agreeing to meet with us. And thank you for taking the time to meet as well and promote the event. Hopefully of course. Hopefully we'll a lot of folks there. Of course. Right.